Yeah. And that's another one that's uh, South African that's done well overseas is Divan Neertling, to name but a few. Yourself, uh, uh, Luke Ferraris, Lyle Hewitson, the list goes on. Warren Kennedy, Brandon Keegan, and the list goes on. You must feel proud that you, you're one of them. Yeah, 100% always, um, especially especially to fly the flag half for South Africa. Um it will never change. I still still love South Africa with all my heart. Um, it's obviously still my favorite country in the world, but we obviously had to move on to bigger and, and, and bigger, bigger and better things. Um, racing wise, I've got I've got goals for over the next ten years. So I'm I'm not here to play around. I'm here to to make a statement for South Africa. Welcome to another edition of In the Box Seat, and we're in the Shorthead Bar and Restaurant at Hollywood Reds Gravel. And with me is our bushy-head friend Andrew Harrison, and myself Warren Lenfern. And we've got a very special guest from all around the world. Do you remember that song, All Around the World? And yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you don't remember that song. No. Eh? Maybe I'm not singing it well. All around the world, Gary's got a horse called All Around the yeah, World. That's exactly. The song. It's not too good. Yeah. <laughs> Donovan <laughs> Dillon's with us. From across the uh, world, he's come to join us on the podcast, digitally, obviously. And uh, Donovan, it's just a great pleasure to chat with you, catch up with you, and to, of course, see you. Oh, likewise, guys. Thanks for having me on the show once again. Um, yeah, it's been a while since chatting to a, a couple of people in SA, but um, we've been super busy this side, setting up, sorting out life, and uh, obviously we've had to start all over again, but... Um, it's been fantastic so far. People have been great. Yeah, it's been outstanding. So thanks for having me on the show. Tell us about uh, the first one or two things you found different from South Africa uh, to your new place. So there's been a, been a few like sort of culture shocks, but um, a lot of the stuff isn't much different to to South Africa. Like like the weather is very very much on par. I would say. Um, the people are great. Everyone's a lot more relaxed here, um, which has been a bit of a culture shock for me. Um, everyone's very, inf everyone's got their guard up in South Africa, obviously. Um, everyone's defensive all the time. Everyone's always at each other. It's, it's just, um, it's become a real tension situation. I think over in South Africa with, with everything that's going on and uh, to come here and just have this relaxed and like everybody, everybody is just friendly. Everybody's just calm. No one's worried about anything. Um, you still got your driver's license? Yeah. I've, no, I've got my driver's license for sure. No. <laughs> you haven't jumped any red robots yet. I've been a crazy rider, but never, never a crazy driver. <laughs> <laughs> Donovan, Arrowfield on your shirt. Tell us about Arrowfield. I know you, you, could probably, you probably need a long time to talk about them, but uh, just touch on, on Arrowfield and, and what they're doing for you. They, they've been outstanding for us. they set us up real good since we've been here. Um, Paul's an absolute gentleman. Uh, the, the entire team that I work with here are absolute. Just, everything just works, you know. Um, it's a pleasure to work with a team like I have because um, I've been very privileged in the past working with very, very good teams and, and to join another very good team that um, that just works hard and, and, and makes makes sure like everything goes according to plan horse-wise. Um, the horse comes first, obviously, always within within the horse racing industry and and that they put it out there 100%. So, right, 100% first. Donovan, where, whereabouts is Arrowfield? Sorry to butt in all the time. We, we're in New South Wales, in Scone. So um, it's a little bit inland. It's about two hours from Newcastle um, and three hours from Sydney. But um, it's not, it's, if, you really, if you really think about it, it's not as long as that because of the, the, the speed limits and things like that. As you go through the towns, you can only drive 50 and 
I think maximum speed yeah on the freeway is 110, which the freeway isn't very long. Can I send you? Can we send you a few taxis? We'll send you a couple of taxis. No, no, that's been also a big culture shock. Is there's no taxis, yeah, which is which has been crazy because you're used to this mad rush of traffic and all that all the time, and that's been that's been crazy. Like no tra- no taxis, yeah. You actually you start to miss them. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even um, the New South Wales on the edge of New South Wales. There's one race meeting I've always wanted to go to is the Birdsville Cup. How far is Birdsville from where you are? Uh, you got to try and get a ride there. No, no. What do you mean no? Yes. We, 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 we're going to. We, we will get a ride there uh, soon enough. Um, uh, I would love to ride on the race day myself. But, um, yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit of a way away from us, though. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, that's what you were saying. So, so, so it's quite so. So, where that race meeting takes place, where did you say it takes place? Birdsville. Yeah, Birdsville. But, Birdsville. You say it's a bit far away from you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we could just hire a plane, man. You got plenty of cash. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but and everything is few and far between. Yeah, I mean, uh, you're driving an hour and a half. Like, the closest race courses to us is we've got a race course literally down the road here by us in Scone. And then there's half an hour to Musselbrook Race Course. And then we've got hour and a half more inland to Tamworth, hour and a half inland to Gunnedah, two hours to Newcastle, all those race courses in Newcastle, three hours to Sydney, the, all the race courses in, in, in Sydney. And then past Newcastle, the other side, obviously like three hours, two hours uh, drive. So everything's... It's it's a lot of travelling for racing, yeah. No matter. Right. Tell tell me, Donovan, do you uh, who who trains there? Do you you, you work at Arrowfield? Uh, is that a training operation, or how does it work? They're obviously one of the big biggest stud farms in in the world. Yeah. Um, one of the most renowned stud farms in the world, and um, yeah, their stud their stud is amazing. They they they're unbelievable and. They obviously Paul Masara, he, he does the training side and he does the stud side. But um, we've got I work mainly with uh, Leah, who is the assistant trainer for, for Paul. So when obviously when Paul's at the Magic Million sales like now, um, she takes over and she runs the show and we work with her and and all that. So but Paul Masara is is the the trainer of, of Arrowfield, right? So you actually you actually train at at Arrowfield. Yeah, so it's it's mainly horses that don't get sold at the sale, right. or horses that, that they want to keep for breeding purposes in the future. Very like well-bred mares, um, horses that could be stallions, things like that. That okay. keep and then train them. All right, and and Taylor Taylor works with you, your your wife Taylor. She she rides work there. No, or no, no. No, she uh, she she's actually working for a, a trainer in Musselbrook called Tim McIntosh. He he actually trained a double on Monday. Um, yeah, she's also wants to start her own ale business now in February. But um, yeah, no, um, she yeah, she works for a bloke in in Musselbrook. Okay. Uh, how, how many winners have you had so far? I've had six from the 19 rides. Okay. Donovan, how did the family settle in? The, the wife and kids, and how's every, how did they take it? How have they enjoyed it? How have they settled in? New schools, etc. new friends? I don't want to sugarcoat it or anything. The first couple of months were very hard. Obviously, the, the, the big adjustment, setting up, everything like that. But um, at this point in time, I would say we... We're quite well set up. We, we're happy at the moment. Um, we've got a nice place where we're staying. Bryce starts school in February. Um, like I said, Taylor's, Taylor's about to start um, her nail business up in, in, in February. So um, it's all come together really good. It obviously didn't happen overnight, but it's, it's taken, taken a good seven months. But yeah, we, we, we're real, real happy at the moment. The... 
weight situation we were just chatting before we were recorded you you said that the other day you rode at 55 and a half and and andrew and i noted that uh, as we looked at you on the screen uh that you're obviously in fantastic health thank god and uh, you are in a good position and a good place with your weight you're looking slim and trim and and and, and in a good space what, what do you attribute that to besides your wife not feeding you <laughs> chasing me around the house with a wooden spoon <laughs> well listen if, if you cut the hairs off around your nose you'd probably drop another half a kilo yeah don't they have razor blades in australia <laughs> no they do you'll then stand a bit closer to them next time <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's because I'm so slim. I don't want you to see my sunken in cheeks. <laughs> uh, is that what it is? Is that what it is? <laughs> so yeah, no. Um, a lot of it, uh, it. Look, it's hard work. Yeah. Also, I'm not going to sugarcoat that. Um, a lot of hard work. Yeah. Uh, we've been, like I said, non-stop since we've been here. So that's probably a big attribute towards it as well. Um, uh, but also, I've also just um, been a lot more dedicated towards it. Um, I wanted a lot more, yeah, uh, for some reason. It's just I'm a lot more hungry for it, yeah. Um, the money's good. So if you if you can ride at 55 and a half and it's got a winning chance, you, you'd be sure to ride it at 55 and a half because uh, the, income, the income's real good um, racing-wise, you know. So... It's worth a little bit more sacrifice as well. Gives Not you event, gives you that. You, you mentioned that you, you mentioned that you, um, you know, have had a quite a few winners and 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 some rides. Uh, any particular reason? That, you know, I mean. The question uh, to not make it sound strange, but any reason why it's not more? Uh, you know, I, I know that is it. Is it the stable? Are you contracted to one stable only? Are you only allowed to ride for one stable? Can you freelance? Um, I'm not suggesting that uh, due to your uh, lack of ability, you have had less rides. Um, but it does seem a low amount. Uh, why is that? I mean, is it different rules over there? Yeah, so it's different rules. It on, on the visa that we're on, we're obviously on a sponsored visa and, and Paul's uh, sponsored us to come up over here for him. So okay. I am only allowed to ride for him, unfortunately, for the first two years. Okay, interesting. And can apply for permanent res residency after the first two years. And then I'm allowed to ride for everybody, which okay. uh, makes it a big bonus because I've had quite a few phone calls already of, of a lot of trainers interested in me riding a couple of their horses and things like that. So the, the interest is out there. So we're just waiting, obviously, patiently. We've got 17 more months. And okay. then I can ride for everybody. Yeah. Which is, which is if you if you really think about it, seven months has gone by like that. Uh, another 17 months, it's it really a poor yeah. You see, yeah. that was a, that wasn't a rude question. It was, an, I learned something, you see. I learned something. Uh, well, that's bloody hell to make a change. Because I know Donovan well. I mean, he's, he's a man who likes to have a full book of rides at every race meeting. Yeah, no. But also... I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> make sure that once once I get my PR, I'll make sure that... Then, yes, yeah, I can't, wait, I can't wait for the day. Yeah. yeah but, then, but Australian racing is a little bit different. I mean, you have the... What, what they call it? Bush racing or country racing. And then you have city racing. Yeah, so you... Yeah, you got your city racing, you got your bush racing. Well, your, your country racing, your bush. Uh, you can hardly call it bush racing, yeah. Yeah, your country racing, your 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 city racing, and your and your metro meetings. So that's like Sydney, Newcastle, all those meet all those races there. Uh, Sydney, all those those um, race courses there, and then obviously in the country, Musselbrook, Scone, Tamworth. Canada, all right. the places without yeah. Uh, so the metro metro racing is like uh, Melbourne and Sydney, it's Rose Hill and Flemington and those sort of places. Well, yeah, it will be like Rose Hill and, and those places, yeah. Yeah, okay. No good. And how's Bryce doing? Has he calmed down a bit? <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> he's, the big bonus is he starts school in Feb, so we're looking forward to that. Um, we obviously couldn't get him into school up until now, 
but uh, he's been accepted uh, into a little uh, preschool. So he starts Feb, and then it, he starts big school next year. Have you managed to find, uh, not find, have you managed to make any new friends or meet any new interesting people? And, and how's that social side of things been? Yeah, very good, actually. Um, unexpectedly very good. Uh, we've made a good couple of friends through work as well. Sure. But um, just in general, uh, whenever you go out or whatever, you just, people are real good, yeah. We've made friends just chatting to people in the shopping, in, in the shopping centers, in the parks. Um, yeah, all sorts of things. We've made some real good friends, yeah. And Donovan, um Ex-South Africans, Brandon, of course, Brandon's around, and, and a couple of others that are names escape me, but uh, have you bumped into Brandon? Uh, I haven't as yet. Um, also, Hevelin, I haven't as yet. Keegan uh, Latham, I actually stayed with him the night I arrived in Australia. Um, so I st we stayed with him then, and then we went up, um, what, about three months, four months ago, three months ago, and uh, we stayed the weekend over there by then. So, yeah, um, but haven't had much time other than that. He rode one of my very first winners. I don't know if you'll remember a horse yeah. called Rocking in the Snow, Keegan Latham. Oh, Keegan you asked Keegan Latham about a horse called Rocking in the Snow that I used to own with Duncan. It was the mad, mad, absolute mad horse, and Keegan won in it for us. It was just a wonderful win at Clearwood. He'll remember that. Yeah, he's an absolute gentleman, Keegan is. Um, restaurants, uh, shopping centers, uh, I mean, are they hugely different to ours in South Africa? I mean, do you get the big sort of gateway malls and the pavilion malls and... and, and uh, not in Scone. <laughs> not in, yeah, not in, not in Scone. No, so Scone's more, more, more in the country. It's a, it's a real, like, you take Hillcrest and it's, it's a lot smaller than Hillcrest. Um, okay. Shopping centers wise and things like that. Uh, a lot of bottle stores, yeah, the Aussies love to drink. Uh, yeah, well, you're fitting well. well I fit in well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but not, not much, it's much of a muchness. If you, if, you go, if you go into the, obviously, more of the city areas and things like that, yeah, it'll, go, it'll be, you'll get your shopping malls and, and the bigger things like that. Um, the next town over, Musselbrook, they've got a little shopping mall and... And Singleton, they've got shopping shopping malls there, but um, Scone, Scone's a bit smaller. They don't have shop, uh, a big shopping mall. It's like Escort. Okay, it's like Escort. Um, <laughs> what time is it there now, Donny? What time is it there with you in Australia? It's now half past six at night. Half past six at night. Okay, we only decided about that. Yeah, I've just beaten the traffic down uh, Fields Hill, yeah. <laughs> and um, your mom, are you able? To, you know, you keep in touch. Well, obviously, you know, thank goodness for technology. You're, you're in touch regularly. Yeah, we are. Um, mom actually just came over in in December. She came over for a month um, month holiday to to visit. So that was quite cool. Okay, she's fantastic. Uh, brilliant. T tell me, Donan, um, what what stallions are at Ar Arrowfield? I know he's got some nice ones there. Eh? Um, I must be honest. I wouldn't be able to tell you uh, because I, I'm I'm not very involved. Are you on the racing side? The racing yeah. side, yeah, yeah. yeah race. More more the racing side, yeah. But they they got quite a few nice stallions. Eh? Um, that they do. Um, yeah, I've, there's there's a couple of them, but uh, that I can mention. But um, they obviously they also take they obviously all get. Um, Mares from overseas as well, like Japan. We've actually got a cult that's uh, a Japanese cult that's standing there by us now um, in the in the training centre. So we're quite excited about him. Um, yeah, horses from all over the world as well. They've got a couple of South African mares there. National colour is there. Oh right, okay. Yeah. There, there, there is. A, you know, you you got to feel proud, or, or should I, I rather ask you? I'm sure you do feel pri proud. Not arrogant, because you're not an arrogant person, but when you sit back and, and often I talk about on national television about the South Africans that have gone abroad, whether it be Australia, New Zealand, Mauritius, Hong Kong, China, wherever they are, there's a lot of them. I can't name them all. I can't even remember this man sitting next to me's name. What's your name again, John? Uh, uh, George. Uh, George, oh, you've told me that before. Um, 
you must feel proud that you, you're one of the South Africans that are out there in the big bad world um, that are, are plying your trade and doing well. I mean, we've got a South African colleague of yours, Divan Neerthling, currently flying in from Hong Kong to South Africa to come and visit his family after so long with all those restrictions. And that's another one that's uh, a South African that's done well overseas is Divan Neerthling, to name but a few, yourself. Uh, L uh, Luke Ferraris, Lyle Hewitson, the list goes on. Warren Kennedy, Brandon Keegan, and the list goes on. You must feel proud that you, you're one of them. Yeah, 100%, always, um, especially, especially to fly the flag half for South Africa. Um, it'll never change. I still still love South Africa with all my heart. Um, it's obviously still my favorite country in the world, but we obviously had to move on to big game. And, and bigger, bigger and better things. Um, racing wise, I've got I've got goals for over the next ten years. So I'm I'm not here to play around. I'm here to to make a statement for South Africa. So um, I'm going to hit them hard uh, as soon as I can freelance. And, and tell me something, Donovan. I've seen you've grown some hair uh, since you left here. <laughs> um, do they do they call you blue? What is this you're going on about blue? What's no, any, any redhead in Australia is called blue. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know about red, red anywhere. Uh, I've had all sorts of nicknames, yeah, already. <laughs> <laughs> blue. <laughs> I've got a, got, a, got a good few nicknames. <laughs> is there a lot of... In, uh, you know, when you come across... Uh, we've just had our, our stepchildren go across to Norway for, for a holiday and, and they were intrigued at the amount of strangers that sort of, when they heard them talk with a South African accent, came and sort of quizzed them about South Africa, you know, and, and what is it like, and do you have uh, tigers and lions, although there was a tiger running around the streets in Johannesburg it's, not so long ago. It's dead now. Yeah, so, so like that. You, you know, you, you, they get quizzed, you know, is it wild, do you have lions in the, in the streets and all the rest of it? Um, do, have you had that? Have you had anybody quiz you about South Africa? No, not not necessarily. Like when we first got here, um, yeah, a little bit. But since 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 we've been here, people look at you like a little bit weird when you start talking to them um, with your accent, and then they obviously ask where you're from, and then they they intrigued by it, and they ask a couple of questions and that. But nothing about lions roaming the streets and um, things like that. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. So, yeah. But, it's it's hard to, to 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 admit this, but I think Australians are more uh, educated than <laughs> many other, uh, I, other I people. I would say so because because they get so um, they get so headstrong about when people from all over the rest of, like all over the world ask about uh, do you guys have roads in Australia? Do you? <laughs> They ask all these stupid things like, oh, do you keep kangaroos in the zoo um, or do they roam free? Meantime, the, the kangaroos, there's about uh, five or ten roadkill on my way to work every day of the kangaroos. There's that many of them here yeah. roaming free all over. Okay. And Don, uh, not that this, is, this is definitely not a tipping show. It's, it's, it's just a general discussion show. But... You know, we've got South Africans that watch racing and, and, and look at the races overseas. And, and yeah, you know, any two, two or three horses that you've really built a lovely relationship with or that you like or for an, a, a punter that's out there that's looking at the fields, to, a name to look out for and horses that you like? I've, I've got three in my stable. That three, well, I'll, I'll give three horses that I really, really like. Um... The first one is a he's a gelding. Um, his name's Florino. He's Florino. unraced, okay. unraced three year old, but um, worth a horse to follow without a doubt. Um, my other horse that I really like, I think she's going to go places. Is Starliner. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, she's 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 real good. I think she's she's quite a nice three year old. And then um, another horse, Mirror Queen. Okay, lovely. Well, that's can we watch races in Spain? Yeah, absolutely, we can. You just don't wake up early enough for it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, go into, you can go into racing New South Wales, and then they'll 
you'll see all the all the different race meetings are there. Um, or you just type in the jockey's name, trainer's name, or the horse's name, or whatever, and yeah. search, and it will tell you when they're running or when they've run. Or, or so, so it's a lot like form grids or, or gallop, okay. but it's all in one, and you can watch the races on there as well. Yeah, no, we can watch. We can. We must yeah, we watch. Them. We can watch. We must watch. Absolutely. Tell me, have you kept in touch with that grumpy Humby? Yes, I have. We we do chat. We we chat quite often. Yeah, yeah. We're always talking. He's a good mate, so we have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he doesn't have too many runners in Cape Town, so just as well you're not working for him anymore. <laughs> yeah, be out, be out of business. Yeah. Oh, but it's because he's too busy looking at the mountain. That's why trying to find the mountain goats. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why he's. Uh... He loves Cape Town. You, uh, he, his heart is set there. Yeah, absolutely. Then uh, Don, the um, the 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 horse. What's the word I'm looking for? Not not the horse quality, but. I mean, you've sat on horses in South Africa, and now you've sat on horses in Australia and in other places of the world. Um, how do they compare? I mean, you know, South Africa, uh, we've got good horses, but uh, are they much of a muchness? Do you feel, a, is there better quality there? Uh, are we on a par? What's your thoughts on that department? A lot of people would obviously disagree, but I must be honest, I, I think the, the South African horses are really really good horses um our racing status might not be up there with the rest of the world but we've got some serious horses in south africa and and i, I wouldn't i wouldn't put it past it i wouldn't i wouldn't say australia's got um obviously i haven't sat on the the, the, the super super stars yet we will get there but in in average quality of horses in general i would say it's much of a muchness between South Africa and, and, and Australia. Um, I, I wouldn't put, uh, be able to, to, to put a difference in them. Uh, we've got some really, really talented horses over there, and, and they got some really, really talented horses over here. So the quality, the quality difference, I, I wouldn't say is, is massive, not at all. Now, don't speak, because I had two questions. Uh, two questions, just don't speak, before I forget for the ninth time. Question one. Do you keep track on South African results in racing? And question two, I know you've just got to Australia, but in the future, will you come back to say hello to us? Those are the two questions that I've been trying to remember since we started. <laughs> All right. So definitely, uh, I always keep an eye on, on the racing there over in South Africa. I always follow it. Um, I have to. It's, uh, it's still in me. It's um, still very much a part of me. Uh, and yeah, I'm actually coming back in, in June. My sister's getting married, so I will definitely come past and, and show my face to everybody and, and give a good visit and, and say a good hello to everyone. Oh, that's good news, no? Isn't it good? We, 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 no, you couldn't get a ride in the Hollywood Bets Durban July. I, I, I don't know if I'll be staying for that long, but uh, but I would I, I, I would if I if, if I get if I get off the right ride, yeah. Yeah, well, bloody Christoph, Christoph Sumilon has stolen your ride, Golden Ducket. Nah, it's only stolen ride if you performed on it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, okay, so, well, that's good news. So, so um, you do keep in touch uh, with the results. That's fantastic because, of course, you still got all your mates here. And uh, lovely that we'll see you in June. Please come and see us and come and have a race meeting with us and we'll certainly, you know, maybe we'd even do another little interview with you here face-to-face. It'll be fantastic. Yeah, yeah, no, that'll be good. We obviously need riders in, in South Africa, so I don't want you to take them all or to poach them all, but, and I'll say that tongue in cheek, but what advice, Jonathan, can you give some of the young riders in South Africa at the moment? The academy have just taken on their new intake, and there's a, a lot of promising young riders in the country. The academy's where it all started for you. But what's your advice to them? A, at the start of their career, and B, for the bigger picture? Well, there's literally, from what I've based my whole career off, is off of um, Gary Player's one quote, and that was, the harder you work, the luckier you get. And that, that's it. That's, that's all that it is. You, it, it, it's not going to come easy um, 
it's never going to come easy in the racing industry. You've got to work. You've got to work. If you're out of sight, you're out of mind. The main thing is you've just got to work and work and work and work. And the more you work, the luckier you get. It's it's unfortunate, but it, it's so true in the racing industry. And um, uh, for some, it doesn't come early. So you've got to be patient. And yeah. some, it comes early and, 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 and it works. But others... It just does not come early. You just got to persist and you've got to keep pushing through. And the more you go, the better you get. You know, it's it's like anything in life. The, the more you do it, the better you get at it. Um, you, you can agree with that because you've seen him in action. We've all seen him at the tracks in the morning, uh, getting the weight right. We, we've seen it. Yeah, well, I mean, a perfect example was getting your weight down to right golden ducat in the July. I mean, that, that takes dedication. Uh, Looking at a couple of these local apprentices, Jesus, they need their asses kicked, I tell you. Because <laughs> it's about hard work. It's, it's about hard work, no attitudes. It's all about hard work. It's all, it's all it is. Um, there's, there's no, you, you can't get it by, uh, I'll, I'll just ride work one or two days a week, or I'll, I'll just ride work for this bloke, or I'll just ride work for this trainer, or I'll make friends with this owner. It doesn't. It doesn't work like that. Unfortunately, if it was so easy, everybody would do it. But okay. um, it's unfortunately not. Let, let's put it this way. Let me. Let me. Let me um, put a bit of a twist to that because I, I know you'll have an answer for us. What happens if a young apprentice or a young jockey who's trying to make it keeps going, keeps riding the work, keeps going to the trainer, and doesn't get the chances? And you. You've just said that. Uh, you know, sometimes it takes time, Some it comes quicker for others, it doesn't come as quickly, etc. Everyone learns at different rates, but what advice do you, because I'm sure it's happened to everybody, where you keep riding and you keep riding and it's just not clicking. What do they do then, Donovan? You know, uh, I would, myself, as a person, I'll put myself in a different surrounding. I would assess the situation entirely um, of where I'm riding work, of who's riding at that same trainer if if i'm going to get the chances see i always assess things when i was an apprentice i always put myself into a position where oh that trainer's got no one riding work for them let me go ride for them as opposed to oh that trainer's got 10 jockeys riding for him oh let me go ride for him yes. and maybe i'll get a ride from them i used to go i i always used to assess the situation and make the most of that situation. So, and people people do appreciate it. I can I can guarantee you that now. Um, if you just go out of your way to help the smaller bloke, things happen. They all the wheels always start turning. Um, a lot of people won't believe it, but they do. They just you just got to put yourself into a different situation instead of running with the herd, yeah. trying to get rides. You got to separate yourself from the from the herd. As hard as it is sometimes, and as funny as it is, as people may might might give you flack or or might say stupid things to you or whatever it is, it doesn't matter because you there molding yourself. You put yourself in a different situation, change everything entirely, and if it still doesn't work, like I I would I would. I would constantly just keep on putting myself into different situations until it would work. Because yeah. I, don't, I don't accept failure, never ever. That's 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 solid advice, and I, I hope every, every apprentice listens to you. Well, it's, it's 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 um, certainly uh, yeah, it's solid solid. Good advice. Not just apprentices, just average jockey too. Yeah, absolutely. That's good advice. Now, um, when you come. To South Africa. What are the chances of Andrew Harrison and I getting one of those lacquer era field shirts? <laughs> Jesus. Um, well, okay, maybe I think I'll, I'll definitely try to organize. Yeah, tell them we're good marketers, but the only problem is I don't know what the Australians are like, but we two fat buggers, eh? We need double X, triple X, L, biggest they've got. I think I think this is a it's a medium. So. Oh, medium. That won't go around. That won't go around our legs. We're so fat, Andrew and I. <laughs> um, I could always check the sizes. 
Das ist ja der biggest Schmack in ja, Plan. Ich, 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 Not for you, though. Yeah, I say, not for me, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. you tell me I'm a schmuck. Yeah. <laughs> Donnie, all that's left, it's night time now. Uh, it's, we're going to, certainly, if you've got time when you're in South Africa in June, we'd love to have you sit with us, actually, and, and enjoy a cup of coffee, and we could do another recording, even so. Uh, but, yeah, we just wanted to touch base with you. We're going to start touching base with some of, of the South Africans around the country, around the world, rather. Uh, but to you and your family, all, all the blessings, all the best, And uh, just keep firing and, and, um, and keep in touch. And, and keep in touch, absolutely. And, and it's not a case of I'm blowing smoke up anyone's backside. Uh, from day one, when uh, one Reese van Vaik uh, met you and I met you many years ago, uh, it, was, it was evident right from the start that you were always going to make a success of his career. So we're proud of you. Well done. And just keep firing, you and your family. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. Anything else to add? Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> we're going to ask to one or two end the call, or you can end it for us. We've got one or two other things to talk about betting uh, prospects. But uh, nice to chat to you. We'll see you soon, Donovan. Likewise. Cheers, Zach. Cheers, Cheers brother. brother. Cheers, Cheers, guys. guys. Cheers. Cheers. Love to the family. So I've got Hong Kong Jockey Club, Mauritius Turf Club, uh, any racing stables. You must, uh, that's what it's about. No. We, we, you know, I mean. Uh, yeah. I just want to vest like Onslow. Vest, you know, yeah, on, you know the, Onslow. Yeah, but, no, what's who's keeping on? up appearances? Ah, okay. But that bloke who sits in front of the TV with a vest on and okay. drinks beer. That's okay, me. that's you. All right. Well, because uh, I was going to say you haven't really got the physique to wear a vest, but anyway, I just no, you've got to have a point. You've got to have a love, point. Love, love your boop day. Love yeah. your boop day. Okay. Now, uh, on a serious note, the betting. There are so many interesting, exciting bets. Now, where's your hat? My hat is at home. Um, with all the other free hats that I got. Um, I marketed this yesterday a lot on, on Gallup TV. I heard, yes. Good, because uh, that's our job. And I bumped into a few people at the races. It's, it's, you know, they all said, well, thanks for telling them about it because they went and took one or two little bets and they had some fun. And that's what it's all about. It's a pick a card, one rand unit, two rand minimum bet. You get the exact card option, correct number and suit. You get the correct number, not suit specific. The correct suit, clubs, diamonds, hearts, and spades. You've already confused everybody. Uh, the correct color, black or red, card call. The best thing to do is what I do is you just go up to the tote operator. Quick pick. Give a quick pick. Ten buck quick pick, and uh, that's uh, how it works. So it's card call. There's a draw that gets done every hour on Gallup TV. Try it. Don't knock it unless you've tried it. Uh, it's uh, one of the new bets that Tab Gold are launched. And then, of course, there's score six and score ten. Um, that's also a new bet. That's all to do with soccer. Um, go on and chat to your tote operators. They know all about it. Uh, and they'll be able to guide you in the right direction. Lastly, before we close, the World Sports Betting Met. Yes. And that seven and a half million rand, I think it's seven and a half million rand sales race. Um, that's big Tom, eh? Huge money. Uh, I see the top rated. Where's my... Let's just quickly uh, talk about it. Uh, have a look at my... I don't uh, quite know how it works. You had to sort of buy your spot in it or... Yeah, I'm not quite sure how it works as well, but you had to buy a golden ticket. Uh, okay. okay. Um, but this is the Met. Uh, Al Matana drawn 12. Jet Dog 4. Comedy Ding 6. Do It Again 8. Linebacker 16. Rascalian 17. 1 Golden Ducket. 9 Nexus, 13 Warrior, 10 Zapatidis, 7 Universal, 11 Waterbury Lane, 19 Pomp and Power, 18 Gem King, 5 Sparkling Water, 3 Marina, 15 Rain and Holland, 14 Cousin Casey, 2 Make It Snappy. Who do you like? Sparkling Water. Yeah, I, I think I, I like Sparkling Water as well. And for me, Comedy Ding, I think they've primed and primed and primed Comedy Ding bang for this race. Yeah. But uh, those are my two. Uh, then uh, that sales race, it's the World Sports Betting Gold Rush, non-black time, non-black type. Uh, I won't go through those, but the top rated is 109. That's Royal Aussie. Uh, and then the next best rated is at 108, Dave the King. So that's going to be a fantastic race. Um, but yeah, lots of good racing coming up. 
No, that's right. Yeah, and that's the end of the Cape season as well. Yeah. yeah. yeah so Can you believe it? Then we're going to start uh, one or two races, Joburg. Then, of course, we're going to focus on KZN's champion yeah. season. That's going to. Yeah. Where does the time go? Where does the time go? That's oh, Johnny, Johnny Clegg. Johnny yeah. Clegg, okay. Yeah. And a, a big shout out to Bill Lambert, the Gold Circle ambassador. It's his birthday today, and we wish him all the very, very best. But that's it. Uh, no, 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 it's not. It's we, not we, us. No, 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 no. We, we've got to uh, congratulate Cook. Oh, uh, Wendy Whitehead. I mean, five winners in an afternoon. I've never seen Pretty a good. lady smile as much as that. And yeah. it was just so enjoyable. Did you see the, uh, her fi fifth and final interview? Did you watch yes, it? Yes, I watched it. Uh, orange juice in the parade ring. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Wasn't that a nice touch? Yeah. So we really had fun. We looked after Cookie and her patrons. And it was just a spectacular, spectacular day. Miss Notemba Mlonzi, who had a double from from a Metwood stud, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, in Twetwood stud, I think it is. Uh, John Fox, a racing manager. We're going to have them on our show. We're going to learn about them. We're going to learn about Miss Nontemba Mlonzi. We're going to learn about John Fox. We're going to learn about Twetwood stud. Well, Foxy, all he needs is some slant eyes because he's got the beard. <laughs> I just didn't know where to put the microphone. <laughs> yeah. The beard was getting in the way. He could be Confucius. Yeah. Now... Or confuse uh, us. Our next two guests, just so that you can uh, get ready. Next Friday, we'll be recording. Not next Thursday. Next Friday, we'll be recording. We'll be waiting for our guests to get into Durban. That's none other than Divan Neathling, who works for the Hong Kong Jockey Club. We'll learn about him. Another ex-South African. And then the weekend after that, uh, it looks like uh, we'll try and get John Fox from Mtretu Stud onto our podcast as well. So two interesting guests coming up. Um... And that's it, really. That's a wrap. No, uh, good. Enjoy the Kruger. The, the podcast uh, next Friday, we together. The one after that, we'll be together. Uh, but in between, uh, yeah, as you say, but uh, leave Kruger for a couple of nights, Cape Town for a couple of nights. It's going to be an absolute Jesus, ball. you get around there. Oh, we get around. We've got to get around. But talking about Kruger, you've been many times. This is the first time. I mean, I, I don't know what to expect, Andrew. I really don't. I, I, I'm expecting a koozie or shishlui. Watch out for mosquitoes. <laughs> they said, uh, yeah, but I've taken malaria tablets. No, you don't. Really. That's a silly, silly idea. Silly idea. Uh, okay, but uh, so I can expect a good time. Yeah, bo. Okay. You won't be disappointed. Lovely. From all of us, the whole team, let's see if we can get their names right. George, Michael, Peter, and John. Is that right? Just about. <laughs> Tawanda Tadavinga. Senzo. Senzo. Uh, Pila. And... Apiwe. Apiwe. I've got a terrible memory, eh, John? But thank you to the team. They're standing behind the cameras. They do a fantastic job for us. They, they love us as we love them, our colleagues and good friends. We wish everybody well. Be safe, be kind, and as always, we'll see you. Where will we see you? In the number one box. In the number one box. Thank you for watching this week's episode of In the Box Seat Podcast right until the very end. And we hope that you enjoyed it because we certainly did. If you missed last week's podcast, In the Box Seat Podcast with Andrew and myself, please go and watch it here. And uh, last week's uh, episode will be right there for you to go and enjoy and watch as uh, we know you will certainly enjoy In the Box Seat Podcast from last week.